Hello and welcome back to Cooking with Mark. Today we are going to be making a nice capacitor. I didn't have a pan, so I used a reflector out of an old light fixture. I don't know if this toaster oven even works because it was left at our rental unit after a tenant left. But it's making noise. Okay, we'll bring you back when the food is ready. So, as you probably figured out from the intro, I am going to try to restuff this old capacitor. I don't have the new electrolytics in yet, I have ordered them. I'm replacing it with two Rubicon caps. And I tried to get good ones that were like 105C rated, and also had a longer lifespan. When those come in, we'll stuff them back in, but right now I've got this oven going, and boy does it stink which is why I'm not doing this in the house. And I'm trying to melt the beeswax out of this old capacitor. So let's get back to it and see what it's doing. It's really getting warm in there now. Okay, not much has happened with the capacitor yet, but I can tell the wax is starting to melt because it's getting shiny. I've got this at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. I don't know how I settled on that, it just seemed about right. I can see it's starting to drip. So for those of you unfamiliar with the process, many old electronics, or probably all old electronics, have these electrolytic capacitors that are made out of foil, rolled up and stuffed inside a tube and sealed with beeswax. The insulator dries out over time and then that drops the capacitance. This right here was rated at 30 and 75 microfarads and I tested them and they were just tiny. I mean like picofarads, barely anything. So here's an example, here's another old radio and you can see there are many in here that are the same kind of setup. So you can get modern capacitors and they will go right in and work just fine and get your electronics working. But there's a certain group of weirdos that like to gut the old capacitors and basically rebuild them so that they operate as new and will last for another 50 years or whatever, but will look original, will plug into the original sockets or fit in the chassis or whatever. In this case, I think I mentioned in the first video, I don't really have a reason to do this because it's going back in a radio that you can't see inside of. However, I just thought it'd be a fun thing to learn how to do, so I'm trying it out. And you all are watching me either nail it or screw it up. Well, I turned it off for a minute because it occurred to me if I cleaned the glass, I might be able to actually see the capacitor inside. You know, sometimes I have strokes of genius like that. I turn up the heat a little bit. I may be at like 215 or something. Yeah, I got it back on and the wax is starting to melt off. I'm seeing some smoke in there, which is a little unsettling. I'm gonna see if I can tilt the capacitor upright so that the wax runs off the bottom. Okay, it doesn't seem to be dripping much anymore. So I'm gonna take it out while it's still hot, wipe it off, see what happens. I don't really know how this is put together. I think some have quite a bit of wax sealing them up. This doesn't seem to have that much. Yes, not all of this is wax. Okay, before I destroy this thing, I'm gonna put it back in. Okay, well I've left it in there for another five or 10 minutes. And it doesn't look like anything else is dripping off. So I just kind of have a feeling that whatever's in there is not just beeswax. There's something else and it has a higher melting temperature. And I don't want to crank this thing up high enough to damage anything else, so... I'm just going to take it out and see what I can do. Yeah, most of the beeswax that came out looks like it's starting to cook off. Okay, so this stuff 
whatever it is, does get soft when it's in the oven, but it doesn't melt out because now it's hard again. But I can see right now the terminals where the foil connects to those. So I'm gonna snip those, pull these little tabs off and see if I can just kind of pull everything out. Now I'm gonna pick out of this a little bit more off camera. Okay, well I've almost got it dug out. I got it to the point that you can clearly see the business. Just trying to get out these last couple chunks and I think it'll come out. The hard part is the part I want to save is the cardboard, which is the softest part. I'm going to try to pull that out. There it is. And this looks a little worse for the wear, but that's okay. Let's take a look at a 70 or so year old capacitor. So that must be the aluminum layer. Ah, there's one of the tabs. Probably one of the positives. The negative is probably the one in the middle. There's a capacitor. Well, that's going to be about it for today since I don't have the new capacitors in yet. So I'll bring you back when I have some capacitors. Okay, it's been a few days and I finally got my box from DigiKey. And these are the capacitors I got. As I said before, they are Rubicons. They are both 200 volts. Uh, the original was rated at 150. And this one was 75 and 30. Those aren't really standard values, so I have a 33 and an 82. And I got one little squashed down flat one because I was concerned about height. So that way they can both easily fit in there. Whereas if I had two that size, I'd have to worry about them fitting side by side. And I was less confident about that happening. Regardless, there they are. Um, I don't know if there's a right way and wrong way to do this, but I'm just gonna do it. Okay, so here's what I've done. I've just soldered on some lead extensions. Got a little heat shrink tubing. I'm about to shrink that, and then the idea is that one will go all the way to the bottom. And then this one, I did the same thing, except I'm gonna kind of bend the leads out of the way. So then all, that will all just go in there. The red is the 82 microfarad, the white is the whatever it was, 34, whatever. And the blacks are the negatives, so those will get hooked together. Okay, I'm just gonna hot glue these in place. And there's the heater. You wouldn't know we're now into April because it is freezing out. Okay, I drilled out these rivets, so now I've got nice little tabs to solder to. So right now I'm not really concerned which goes where. I'm just going to get them soldered onto the tabs, and then I will snap the tabs in where they go.
Okay, that solders really easily. I was worried I was going to have a problem with it flowing out because I didn't know what kind of goo was on here. guess all that's left now is to put these back on the tabs. So common is A, which is right here. I had enough room in here that I didn't worry about keeping these wires short. Okay, then the larger, 75, is B, and I used red for that. And the smaller, should be C. Well, it kind of looks like a mess in there, but I know the wiring is correct. All right, I'm just going to put a little hot glue in here. I don't want to completely bury it because these terminals might have to move a little bit side to side to line up with the circuit board. But I don't want the wires to jump around and break. Okay, and there's the correct way to stuff a capacitor according to me, some guy who's never done it before. So, take that with a grain of salt. All right, well that wraps up part two of the radio series. Here's the capacitor, all restuffed, ready to go back in. I've got some circuit board blanks ordered, and I just about have my image file ready to go to remake the circuit boards. And I will have that file available on my website. It is not there yet because I'm still working on it. But once it's up, you can go steal it. Um, I got capacitors in. And I just thought this was kind of amusing. Here are the ones that came out. And I ordered the ones with the largest physical size from DigiKey that I could. And that is how big they are. And that is 1,000 volt. Uh, 0.01 microfarad. Same story here. There's one of these little ones. I think it's like uh, 0.047 or something. 0.47. These are the replacements. And the most comical, uh, here we got a 50 volt 0.05 microfarad. Look at the replacements. It's unreal. So again, from a strictly electrical standpoint, this is all fine. But from a mechanical standpoint, I might have a little problem because look at how far apart that one was set up. It could fit a dozen of these across that span and barely make it. Um, I probably won't get that circuit board in for a little while. So my next video, probably instead of that, I'm gonna shift onto the case. I've taken this apart and cleaned it up. Simple green in the kitchen sink. So you can see it's looking a lot nicer. However, there is one spot somewhat embarrassed to even talk about that I assume that's coming through, the black speckles. They're on the top. Um, I think there's maybe a couple on the side, but mostly it's confined to the top. They did not come that way. I did that about the time I brought it home. I had it sitting on the garage floor. I was working on the 53 Chevy and ended up slinging some little drops of paint remover on the plastic case. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I will probably try to use heavy scratch remover, plastic polish. I don't think they're that deep, but they're just kind of ugly and I want to make it look nice. So the next video will probably be me trying to deal with that. And then depending on the circuit boards come in, that might be the fourth video. Eventually I have to get onto the movement here. I don't think it needs much, but I at least want to clean it up and re-lubricate things. So that's the game plan. It's still freezing cold out, and there's another winter storm advisory tonight, so I'm in no hurry to get outside and work on a car. So we'll just catch you in the next one. See you later.